Dravidian architecture is an architectural idiom in Hindu temple architecture that emerged in the southern part of the Indian subcontinent or South India, reaching its final form by the 16th century. It consists primarily of Hindu temples where the dominating feature is the high gopura or gatehouse. Large temples have several. Mentioned as one of three styles of temple building in the ancient book Vastu Shastra, the majority of the existing structures are located in the southern Indian states of Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Telangana. Various kingdoms and empires such as the Cholas, the Shara, the Kakatiyas, the Pandyas, the Pallavas, the Gangas, the Rashtrakutas, the Shalukas, the Hoysalas, and Vijayanagara Empire among others have made substantial contribution to the evolution of Dravidian architecture. This style of architecture can also be found in parts of North India Teli Ka Mandir Gwalior, Bittergaon Baitala Dula, Bhubaneswar, Northeastern and Central Sri Lanka. History Throughout Tamilakam, a king was considered to be divine by nature and possessed religious significance. The king was the representative of God on earth and lived in a coil, which means the residence of God. The modern Tamil word for temple is coil. Titular worship was also given to kings. Other words for king like ko king, arai emperor and andavar conqueror now primarily refer to God. Tol Kapiar refers to the three crowned kings as the three glorified by heaven. In the Dravidian-speaking South, the concept of divine kingship led to the assumption of major roles by state and temple, Mayamata and Manasara Shilpa texts estimated to be in circulation by 5th to 7th century AD, is a guidebook on Dravidian style of Vastu Shastra design, construction, sculpture and joinery technique. Isanasavagarudeva Padhati is another text from the 9th century describing the art of building in India in South and Central India. In North India, Brihat Samhita by Varahamahira is the widely cited ancient Sanskrit manual from 6th century describing the design and construction of Nagara style of Hindu temples. Traditional Dravidian architecture and symbolism are also based on Agamas. The Agamas are non-Vedic in origin and have been dated either as post-Vedic texts or as pre-Vedic compositions. The Agamas are a collection of Tamil and Sanskrit scriptures chiefly constituting the methods of temple construction and creation of murti, worship means of deities, philosophical doctrines, meditative practices, attainment of sixfold desires and four kinds of yoga. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Composition and Structure. Chola-style temples consist almost invariably of the three following parts, arranged in differing manners, but differing in themselves only according to the age in which they were executed. The porches or mandapas, which always cover and precede the door leading to the cell. Gate pyramids, gopuras, which are the principal features in the quadrangular enclosures that surround the more notable temples. Gopuras are very common in Dravidian temples. Pillared halls or are used for many purposes and are the invariable accompaniments of these temples. Besides these, a South Indian temple usually has a tank called the Kalyani or Pushkarni, to be used for sacred purposes or the convenience of the priests, dwellings for all the grades of the priesthood are attached to it, and other buildings for state or convenience. <laughs> Influence from different periods In southern India seven kingdoms and empires stamped their influence on architecture during different times. Sangam period From 300 BCE to 300 CE, the greatest accomplishments of the kingdoms of the early Chola, Shara and the Pandyan kingdoms included brick shrines to deities Murugan, Shiva, Amman and Tirumal of the Tamil pantheon. Several of these have been unearthed near Adichandalar, Kaverapumpaharpatanam and Mahabalipuram, and the construction plans of these sites of worship were shared to some detail in various poems of Sangam literature. One such temple, the Saluvankupan Marukan Temple, unearthed in 2005, consists of three layers. The lowest layer, consisting of a brick shrine, is one of the oldest of its kind in South India, and is the oldest shrine found dedicated to Marukan. It is one of only two brick shrine pre Pallava Hindu temples to be found in the state, the other being the Vitririnda Purumal temple at Vepathur dedicated to Lord Vishnu. 
The dynasties of early medieval Tamalakam expanded and erected structural additions to many of these brick shrines. Sculptures of erotic art, nature and deities from the Madurai Meenakshi Amman Temple, and the Srirangam Ranganathaswami Temple date from the Sangam period. Badami Shalukas The Badami Shalukas also called the early Shalukas, ruled from Badami, Karnataka in the period 543-753 CE and spawned the Vesara style called Badami Shalukya architecture. The finest examples of their art are seen in Patadakal, Ihole and Badami in northern Karnataka. Over 150 temples remain in the Malaprabha basin. The most enduring legacy of the Chalukya dynasty is the architecture and art that they left behind. More than 150 monuments attributed to the Badami Chalukya, and built between 450 and 700, remain in the Malaprabha Basin in Karnataka. The rock cut temples of Patadakal, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Badami, Ihole, and Mahakuta are their most celebrated monuments. Two of the famous paintings at Ajanta Cave No. 1, The Temptation of the Buddha, and the Persian Embassy are attributed to them. This is the beginning of Chalukya style of architecture and a consolidation of South Indian style. Topic: <laughs> Pallavas. The Pallavas ruled from AD 600 to 900, and their greatest constructed accomplishments are the single rock temples in Mahabalipuram and their capital Kanchipuram, now located in Tamil Nadu. The earliest examples of Pallava constructions are rock-cut temples dating from 610-690 CE and structural temples between 690-900 CE. The greatest accomplishments of the Pallava architecture are the rock-cut group of monuments at Mahabalipuram at Mahabalipuram, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, including the Shore Temple. This group includes both excavated pillared halls, with no external roof except the natural rock, and monolithic shrines where the natural rock is entirely cut away and carved to give an external roof. Early temples were mostly dedicated to Shiva. The Kailasanatha temple also called Rajasimha Pallaveswaram in Kanchipuram built by Narasimhavarman II also known as Rajasimha is a fine example of the Pallava style temple. Contrary to popular impression about the succeeding empire of the Cholas pioneering in building large temple complexes, it was the Pallavas who actually pioneered not only in making large temples after starting construction of rock-cut temples without using mortar, bricks etc. Asterisk asterisk examples of such temples are the Thirupadagam and Thiruoragam temples that have 28 and 35 feet 11 meters high images of Lord Vishnu in his manifestation as Pandavaduthar and Travikraman forms of himself. In comparison, the Shiva Lingams in the royal temples of the Cholas at Thanjavur and Gangaikonda Cholapurams are 17 and 18 feet 5 .5 meters high. Considering that the Kanchi Kailasanatha temple built by Rajasimha Pallava was the inspiration for Raja Raja Cholas Brihadiswara at Thanjavur, it can be safely concluded that the Pallavas were among the first emperors in India to build both large temple complexes and very large deities and idols. Asterisk asterisk many Shiva and Vishnu temples at Kanchi built by the great Pallava emperors and indeed their incomparable Rathas and the Arjuna's penance Ba Relief also called Descent of the Ganga are proposed UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The continuous Chola, Pallava and Pandian belt temples along with those of the Adagamans near Karur and Namakal, as well as the Sethupathi temple group between Pudukatai and Ramaswaram uniformly represent the pinnacle of the South Indian style of architecture that surpasses any other form of architecture prevalent between the Deccan Plateau and Kanyakumari. In the Telugu country the style was more or less uniformly conforming to the South Indian or Dravidian idiom of architecture. Rashtrakutas The Rashtrakutas who ruled the Deccan from Manyaheta, Karnataka in the period 753-973 CE built some of the finest Dravidian monuments at Ellora the Kailasanatha temple, in the rock-cut architecture idiom, with a style showing influences from both North and South India. Some other fine monuments are the Jaina Narayana temple at Patadakal and the Navalinga temples at Kukunur in Karnataka. The Rashtrakuta contributions to art and architecture are reflected in the splendid rock-cut shrines at Ellora and Elephanta, situated in present-day Maharashtra. 
It is said that they altogether constructed 34 rock-cut shrines, but most extensive and sumptuous of them all is the Kailasanatha temple at Ellora. The temple is a splendid achievement of Dravidian art. The walls of the temple have marvelous sculptures from Hindu mythology including Ravana, Shiva and Parvathi while the ceilings have paintings. These projects were commissioned by King Krishna I after the Rashtrakuta rule had spread into South India from the Deccan. The architectural style used was partly Dravidian. They do not contain any of the shikaras common to the Nagara style and were built on the same lines as the Virapaksha temple at Patadakal in Karnataka. Western Shalukas The Western Shalukas also called the Kalyani Shalukas or later Shalukas ruled the Deccan from 973-1180 CE from their capital Kalyani in modern Karnataka and further refined the Shalukyan style, called the Western Shalukya architecture. Over 50 temples exist in the Krishna River Tungabhadra Dobe in central Karnataka. The Kasi Vishveshvara at Lakundi, Malakarjuna at Kuruveshi, Kalishwara Temple at Bigali and Mahadeva at Atagi are the finest examples produced by the later Shalukya architects. The reign of Western Shalukya dynasty was an important period in the development of architecture in the Deccan. Their architectural developments acted as a conceptual link between the Badami Shalukya architecture of the 8th century and the Hoysala architecture popularized in the 13th century. The art of Western Shalukas is sometimes called the Gadig style, after the number of ornate temples they built in the Tungabhadra, Krishna River Dobe region of present-day Gadig district in Karnataka. Their temple building reached its maturity and culmination in the 12th century, with over a hundred temples built across the Deccan, more than half of them in present-day Karnataka. Apart from temples they are also well known for ornate stepped wells Pushkarni, which served as ritual bathing places, many of which are well preserved in Lakundi. Their stepped well designs were later incorporated by the Hoysalas and the Vijayanagara Empire in the coming centuries. <laughs> Pandya Srivaliputur Andal Temple is the official symbol of the government of Tamil Nadu. It is said to have been built by Pariyajvar, the father-in-law of the Lord, with a purse of gold that he won in debates held in the palace of Pandya King Vallabhadeva. The primary landmark of Srivaliputur is twelve-tiered tower structure dedicated to the Lord of Srivaliputur, known as Vedapatrasayi. The tower of this temple rises 192 feet 59 meters high and is the official symbol of the government of Tamil Nadu. Other significant temples of the Pandyas include the famous Meenakshi Temple in Madurai. Cholas The Chola kings ruled from AD 848-1280 and included Rajaraja Chola I and his son Rajendra Chola who built temples such as the Briyadeshvara Temple of Thanjavur and Briyadeshvara Temple of Gangaikonda Cholapuram, the Aravatesvara Temple of Darasuram and the Sarabeswara Shiva Temple, also called the Kampaharaswara Temple at Tirubuvanam, the last two temples being located near Kumbakonam. The first three among the above four temples are titled Great Living Chola Temples among the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The Cholas were prolific temple builders right from the times of the first king Vijayalaya Chola after whom the eclectic chain of Vijayalaya Chojasvaram Temple near Nardamalai exists. These are the earliest specimen of Dravidian temples under the Cholas. His son Aditya I built several temples around the Kanchi and Kumbakonam regions. Temple building received great impetus from the conquests and the genius of Aditya I Parantaka I, Sundara Chola, Rajaraja Chola and his son Rajendra Chola I Rajendra Chola I built the Rajaraja temple at Thanjur after his own name. The maturity and grandeur to which the Chola architecture had evolved found expression in the two temples of Tanjavur and Gangaikonda Cholapuram. He also proclaimed himself as Gangaikonda. In a small portion of the Kaveri belt between Tiruchi Tanjore Kumbakonam, at the height of their power, the Cholas have left over 2,300 temples, with the Tiruchi Thanjavur belt itself boasting of more than 1,500 temples. The magnificent Shiva temple of Thanjavur built by Raja Raja I in 1009 as well as the Brahadasvara temple of Gangaikonda Cholapuram, completed around 1030, are both fitting memorials to the material and military achievements of the time of the two Chola emperors. 
The largest and tallest of all Indian temples of its time, the Tanjore Brihadasvara is at the apex of South Indian architecture. In fact, two succeeding Chola kings Raja Raja II and Kulathunga III built the Aravatesvara temple at Darasuram and the Kampaharaswara Shiva temple at Tribhuvanam respectively, both temples being on the outskirts of Kumbakonam around AD 1160 and AD 1200. All the four temples were built over a period of nearly 200 years reflecting the glory, prosperity and stability under the Chola emperors. Contrary to popular impression, the Chola emperors patronized and promoted construction of a large number of temples that were spread over most parts of the Chola empire. These include 40 of the 108 Vaishnava Divya Dasams out of which 77 are found spread most of South India and others in Andhra and North India. In fact, the Sri Ranganathaswami Temple in Srirangam, which is the biggest temple in India asterisk asterisk and the Chidambaram Natarajar Temple though originally built by the Pallavas but possibly seized from the Cholas of the pre-Christian era when they ruled from Kanshi were two of the most important temples patronized and expanded by the Cholas and from the times of the second Chola king Aditya I, these two temples have been hailed in inscriptions as the tutelary deities of the Chola kings. Temple Shrine on the Kineswaram Temple Promontory Extremity and the Kethiaswaram Temple and Munaswaram Temple compounds contain tall Gopuram towers by Chola rule of Trincomalee, Manar, Puttalam and Chidambaram's expansion that escalated the building of those syncretic ladder styles of Dravidian architecture seen across the continent pictured. Of course, the two Brihadisvara temples at Thanjavur and Gangaikonda Cholapuram as well as the other two Shiva temples, namely the Aravatesvara temple of Darasuram and the Sarabeswara Shiva temple which is also popular as the Kampaharaswara temple at Tirubuvanam, both on the outskirts of Kumbakonam were the royal temples of the Cholas to commemorate their innumerable conquests and subjugation of their rivals from other parts of South India, Deccan Elongai or Sri Lanka and the Narmada Mahanadi Gangetic belts asterisk asterisk but the Chola emperors underlined their non-partisan approach to religious iconography and faith by treating the presiding deities of their other two peerless creations, namely the Ranganathaswami temple dedicated to Lord Vishnu at Srirangam and the Nataraja temple at Chidambaram which actually is home to the twin deities of Shiva and Vishnu as the reclining Govindarajar to be their Kuladhavams or tutelary or family deities. The Cholas also preferred to call only these two temples which home their tutelary or family deities as Koil or the Temple, which denotes the most important places of worship for them, underlining their EQ. The above-named temples are being proposed to be included among the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, which will elevate them to the exacting and exalting standards of the great living Chola temples. The temple of Gangaikonda Cholapuram, the creation of Rajendra Chola I, was intended to exceed its predecessor in every way. Completed around 1030, only two decades after the temple at Thanjavur and in much the same style, the greater elaboration in its appearance attests the more affluent state of the Chola Empire under Rajendra. This temple has a larger Shiva Linga than the one at Thanjavur but the Vimana of this temple is smaller in height than the Thanjavur Vimana. The Chola period is also remarkable for its sculptures and bronzes all over the world. Among the existing specimens in museums around the world and in the temples of South India may be seen many fine figures of Shiva in various forms, such as Vishnu and his consort Lakshmi, and the Shiva saints. Though conforming generally to the iconographic conventions established by long tradition, the sculptors worked with great freedom in the 11th and the 12th centuries to achieve a classic grace and grandeur. The best example of this can be seen in the form of Nataraja the Divine Dancer. Topic. Hoysalas The Hoysala kings ruled southern India during the period 1100-1343 CE from their capital Bailur and later Halbidu in Karnataka and developed a unique idiom of architecture called the Hoysala architecture in Karnataka state. The finest examples of their architecture are the Chenakasava temple in Bailur, Hoysalaswara temple in Halbidu, and the Kasava temple in Somanathapura. The modern interest in the Hoysalas is due to their patronage of art and architecture rather than their military conquests. The brisk temple building throughout the kingdom was accomplished despite constant threats from the Pandyas to the south and the Sunas Yadavas to the north. Their architectural style, an offshoot of the western Chalukya style, shows distinct Dravidian influences. The Hoysala architecture style is described as Karnata Dravida as distinguished from the traditional Dravida, and is considered an independent architectural tradition with many unique features.
Topic: <inaudible> Vijayanagara. The whole of South India was ruled by Vijayanagara Empire from 1343 to 1565 CE, who built a number of temples and monuments in their hybrid style in their capital Vijayanagara in Karnataka. Their style was a combination of the styles developed in South India in the previous centuries. In addition, the Yali columns pillar with charging horse, balustrades parapets, and ornate pillared manitapa are their unique contribution. King Krishna Deva Raya and others built many famous temples all over South India in Vijayanagara architecture style. Vijayanagara architecture is a vibrant combination of the Chalukya, Hoysala, Pandya and Chola styles, idioms that prospered in previous centuries. Its legacy of sculpture, architecture and painting influenced the development of the arts long after the empire came to an end. Its stylistic hallmark is the ornate pillared Kalyanamantapa marriage hall, Vasanthamantapa open pillared halls and the Rayagapura tower. Artisans used the locally available hard granite because of its durability since the kingdom was under constant threat of invasion. While the empire's monuments are spread over the whole of southern India, nothing surpasses the vast open-air theatre of monuments at its capital at Vijayanagara, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In the 14th century, the kings continued to build Vesara or Deccan-style monuments, but later incorporated Dravida-style gopurams to meet their ritualistic needs. The Prasanna Virapaksha Temple, underground temple of Bukka Raya I and the Hazar Rama Temple of Deva Raya I are examples of Deccan architecture. The varied and intricate ornamentation of the pillars is a mark of their work. At Hampi, though the Vitala temple is the best example of their pillared Kalyanamantapa style, the Hazara Ramaswami temple is a modest but perfectly finished example. A visible aspect of their style is their return to the simplistic and serene art developed by the Chalukya dynasty. A grand specimen of Vijayanagara art, the Vitala temple, took several decades to complete during the reign of the Tuluva kings. Kerala The version of Dravidian architecture found in Kerala in the far southwest is significantly different. Very large temples are rare, and sloping roofs with projecting eaves dominate the outline, often arranged in a number of tiers. As in Bengal, this is an adaption to the heavy monsoon rainfall. There is usually a stone core below a timber superstructure. The architecture of Kerala goes back to the Shara dynasty in the 12th century, and a variety of ground plans have been used, including circular ones. The development of multi-building complexes came relatively late. <laughs> Jaffna The culture of a region is recognisable in architecture. Jaffna was close to South India and the majority of the inhabitants of Jaffna have a Dravidian origin. In former royal city of Nalur, there are architectural ruins of Jaffna kingdom. See also Hindu temples, South India and Tamil Nadu Hindu temple architecture, Dravidian style Koyal – Hindu temples in Dravidian architectural style